Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we're talking about mounting and dismounting, and why it's important to be talking about this topic. It's something that I don't see as being super popular about talking about it, um, but the big reason it's important to talk about it is safety. Now, there's a lot of reasons to teach your horse to come pick you up. There's a lot of ways to do it, but why is it important? Well, when you mount and dismount, uh, the very, one of the very first things or the last things you do is put your foot in or take your foot out of the stirrup. This is a very vulnerable position for the rider to be in. When your foot is in the stirrup, at that point, you are connected to the horse. If the horse moves, invariably, you have no choice but to go with them, whether that's one step or it's a big spook. Or what if the mounting block tips over? All of these things factor into your safety when you mount. And when you dismount, if the last thing you do is put your foot out of the stirrup, then again, your weight is on the ground. And if the horse moves, you have almost no choice but to go with them. And this is very vulnerable. I've heard a lot of uh, accidents happen um, where the horse is a good horse, um, but the foot is in the stirrup, either mounting or dismounting, and the horse moves, and you can blow out your ankle, knee, hip. You can hit the ground, break more things. It's super important. Let's talk about dismount. Well, let's talk about mounting first, and I've got a couple videos for you guys, and we'll talk about dismounting. First, mounting from the ground. Don't do it. <laughs> Why? It's not good for the horse's back. You, uh, there are studies show they look at the horse's rib cage, you know, after they passed away, and there's marks where the horse, if the horse has always been mounted on the ground, the ribs are actually pulled out of shape because invariably we mount from the same side. So, mount from a mounting block or mount uh, on alternating sides. Ideally, always use a mounting block or mount from something. I do this as well, even though I'm young enough and can climb up on those big horses. I only do it if I absolutely need to. Here's another tip, though, which you'll see in a video, that when you mount from the ground, if you have to, do it close to the horse. So many of us just climb up, we grab, if you do it the wrong way, the horn and the, the cantle, and you pull yourself and you pull out with the saddle. What you want to do is get as close to the saddle, to the horse as you can, and step straight up. So your weight is pulling down and not out on the horse. That's super important, and no one talks about that. Uh, in the video I'm going to show you in a sec, you're going to see that. Also, if here's another thing. Whether you mount from the ground or from a mounting block or your trailer or a truck or a picnic table, whatever it is, when your foot is in the stirrup, ignore everything else around you. Get in the saddle. While you're standing on the ground or mounting block and your foot is in the stirrup, you are the most vulnerable. If the horse moves, you are not on top of him and you're not with him and you're most likely going to be dragged. Now, there's ways to stop it. If your hands are on the reins, you can possibly stop it. But if once your foot is in the saddle, get in the saddle. Get in and sit down. Whether you lean over and put your weight in or just swing yourself up, if your foot is in the stirrup, get in there. Don't stand there talking to someone. Even if you have an amazing horse, even amazing horses can spook. The mounting block could tip over. If you put your foot in the stirrup, get on. Don't wait. Don't pause for somebody else. Either foot in the stirrup and get on, or don't put your foot in the stirrup. Those are your options in terms of safety. And I really want you guys to be safe while you're doing this. Hey, Chrissy. Hi, Diana. <laughs> Chrissy says amen. I know Chrissy and I have talked about this a bit. And Julie is watching. Uh, not as popular of a topic as yesterday, but it's so important. Uh, the best thing you guys can do is share this video so more trail riders can see this, more people can see it, and benefit and be safe. Okay, let's just go ahead and watch this mounting video uh, that I made. Uh, this is from a clinic last weekend, two weeks ago, whatever, in Idaho. Uh, I was just demonstrating with this horse. Uh, also, before I show you the video, the other important thing when you dismount, it is much better to take your foot, both feet out of the stirrup before you slide down, then to land and take your foot out. Why? Because I've seen so many people land on the ground and struggle to get their foot out of the stirrup. This is another moment of vulnerability. If that horse spooks or runs away for any reason, you have to go with them because your foot is stuck in the stirrup. And most of us don't have safety stirrups. Take your feet, both feet out of the stirrup before you get down. And I show you this, and I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you. Wow. Yep. Okay, before I do more, I do want to like show like, so if you slide off, right, there are ways to do it carefully. And I don't like when people step down with their foot still in the stirrup. 
because it's, it's just a safety thing. Most horses don't go anywhere. So until they do, take, take your foot out of, the, out of your right stirrup and you can alternate this. Lean forward, swing your leg over, lean over the saddle, take your foot out and I, my weight is over the middle and you can slide down. Yeah, it's a little more work, but if the horse is calm and used to it, they don't care. It just, you have to go a little slower and lean over and then slide down. Uh, yeah, I, I see a lot of people doing it and I don't make a big deal because I probably should every time I see it, but it is a safety thing. There are ways to get down that don't involve jumping and he's a little bit taller, so it's a little bit longer of a way down. Right, because you're centered for a while and then you just slide down and you're down. This, and a lot of people also, so like when you mount, try to turn so people can see. Good job, Bo, you're being great. So, so a lot of people put their foot in the stirrup, don't go anywhere, please. And they, they pull out like this. You should get as close as possible. I'm right up touching him and step straight up. But a lot of people just pull on it this way versus pulling up. And they also grab here versus grabbing the mane because it's more work. So to put your foot in the stirrup, get close and pull up is much better. And people just pull out on the saddle. So there you go. There is kind of showing you how to mount close to the saddle and how you can dismount uh, safely. So many people, whether you get down on a mounting block or on the ground, leave their foot in the stirrup till they get down. And that's a moment, a large moment of vulnerability. And yes, it may never happen to you. Um, it's just, it could, it could happen to any of us. It can happen to me, which is why I'm really careful. Sherry says hi from White Court, Al White Court Alberta, Canada. PJ says hi from Michigan. Nita says she's sharing because it's important. Thank you so much, Nita. Linda's uh, totally important. Chrissy says that's exactly what I do. Good. We're on the same page, Chrissy. Once you've had knee replacements, it's the only way to go. Well, good to know. Linda says that. And Linda says mounting blocks roll. Yes. So I use mounting blocks. Um, some people, let me address a couple things quickly. Some people ask about what about teaching your horse to lay down, bow, or park out to get on. I believe those are fine things to teach, but should be used in an emergency. Um, like if you are someplace where you literally can't get on, there's no rock, no ditch, um, but those should be a last resort. When your horse is parked out, their back is very, very vulnerable because it's hollowed out. So if you climb on, you're pulling so much on muscles and structures that are at their weakest point, and so it should be only done in an emergency. Much better to teach your horse to come to you on the mounting block. Hey, there's good news. I have a free video. The link is in the description. Um, but just so you can see, I want to show you this video. I forgot I had this video. This is from nine years ago with my horse Jackson. So this is how I mount and how I like training horses to mount, it, which is to come to you. Um, and its proper way is only being silly and a little facetious. So my horse Jackson is loose in the round pen. He's so good at this. He, wherever I'm at, he comes and side passes right to me and knows how to line himself up, whether I'm on a fence, a pedestal, a mounting block, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then you can, I don't know, this is from a nine years ago, so no judgment here. Get on, swing on, put your balance over, just like that. So super important, um, very fun, fun skill to learn. I have a free video and a training DVD. The links are in the description. It's it's a safety thing, and it's also about the horse's safety and about the horse's back. When you mount from the ground, you're pulling on them. Also, when you mount from the ground, you should have your left hand should hold the reins and a good chunk of mane, and you should pull on this and not the saddle. It's going to hurt the horse much less than you yanking on the saddle. Your right hand will be adjusting your stirrup so you can put your foot in, and then grabbing onto the cantle and pulling yourself up. Um, and again, pull hard with your left hand, which has the reins and their mane in it. And that will be the safest for you and the horse. And again, a big point is if your foot is in the stirrup, get in the saddle. And before you dismount, take your feet out of the stirrup, whether you take both feet out at once and jump off like I normally do, or whether you lean over, 
slide around, take both feet out, and slide down, which you can do with a mounting block. But be very careful and very cautious, not only for your safety, but for the horse's comfort. Mm. Uh, let's see. Heidi says Bo was such a good boy. Yeah, I was on Heidi's horse, Bo, at the clinic. He stood like a rock. Uh, he was so good. Melissa says, my knees kill me hopping down, so I'll try this. Yes, do that. And feel free to get down on a mounting block. There's no shame in protecting your body and staying safe. Jody says, hi from Indiana. I love this. Pamela says, uh, hi from balmy West Tennessee. Great topic. Monique says, uh, hi Ivy. My rein got loose last weekend on a ride and had to dismount. I never mount from the ground, but had to. Was able to stand him next to a higher ground and have my friend stand with her horse in front, but not too close. Johnny didn't budge, so I was happy. That's awesome. Um, but you want to plan for the eventuality that you won't have a mounting block, which means, here's a tip, if you have a log, don't have him side pass to it. Have him stand over it. So if the log is, if the log, have the horse stand this way. But train your horse to come to you, whether you stand on a rock. Train it before the accident happens. Train it at home. It's so fun. Whether you use my free training video or buy the DVD or use somebody else's technique, as long as it's calm and your horse gets it, it is so fun to train and you look like a pro when your horse just comes to you whenever you climb on anything. Seriously. Everybody's going to be so impressed. Uh, Cindy says, I need to teach my horse to come to me at the mounting block. Go for it, Cindy. Lisa says, I need to teach my something so bad or he moves away from the mounting block every time I try to get on. So here's the thing. I've actually talked about this at clinics. You know how we try to take a horse to a mounting block and they almost always turn their hip away? Well, you know why I think this is? One is they may not want to be mounted. But secondly, we're always teaching horses to face us all the time. Move their hips away, face us. Move the hips away, face us. And then we climb on the mounting block and they move their hips away and face us. And we're like, what the heck? But how does the horse know you want something different until you train something different? And this is true for everything. If you don't teach the horse what you want, he doesn't know. You walk him up to the mounting block, you climb on, he turns and faces you. We teach him to turn and face us all the time. And why wouldn't he do it there? You never taught him to stand still when you said, whoa. You think whoa means stand still? Whoa doesn't mean that to your horse. Trust me, try it. So you have to train it. If your horse doesn't do it, it's on you. But the good news is it's so easy to train. So easy. You got this. Sherry says, I hold up one <laughs> arm and yell out taxi and my horse knows by my verbal cue and physical cue, holding up one arm. T knows to come and square up to me. That's awesome. And it's really cool because Sherry says she uses the verbal and the physical cue. She understands that it's not just one or the other. It can be, it's both together and her horse has learned that. That's awesome. Uh, Melissa says, my girl will swing over to the block because she's expecting a food reward. She backs up before I can get on. I'm only reinforcing when she stays standing, but this has been a frustrating turn of events. Okay, great question. So you have your horse trained to come to the mounting block. And then they back up expecting the treat. That's probably because you let them back up early on. In my DVD, I talk about not letting them do that. Letting them, did they? Um, you always go out and feed them in front. You never let them back up to you. Um, so what you can do is as soon as she gets to the mounting block, so you you climb on, she side passes. Before she can even back up a single step, jump down, climb down, whatever you can do, and go to the front of her before she can back up and give a treat. Repeat this a bunch so that she knows you're going to come to her and that she doesn't have to reach around. But the trick is to get the food to her before she even has a chance to back up, if that makes sense. Get her before she has a chance to make that mistake uh, would be my recommendation. And then also... Uh, and then gradually, while she's still chewing, see if you can wait one second and then get down and go to the front of her. Again, to try to prevent her from going uh, backwards before she even has that chance. Um, Chrissy says, Natrack tricks. Uh, yesterday I did two offside mounts using a log in a ditch. Yeah. So teach your horse to come to you on the left side, but you can also teach him to come to you on the right side. And depending if you do any trail challenges, that will sometimes be something they require. Uh, Lori says, I love the idea of teaching my horse to come to me on the mounting block. We'll start working on it this week. I do a lot, lot of liberty work, and this will be a great addition. Oh, Lori, if you do liberty work already, this is going to be so easy. Let me give you my best tip for teaching your horse to come to you. Um, so I have, uh, two weeks ago in New Hampshire, we had horses that knew to come to you on the mounting block. They knew it. But they, you, the, the problem 
that the owner was explaining to me is that you always have to have a whip in your hand. Well, the reason you have to have a whip in your hand is because you always use the whip. So here's my number one tip for teaching this, whether you use your arm or a whip at the beginning. When you first hold it over there, wherever you're going to touch them, wait three seconds. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. And then if they haven't moved at all towards you, you can tap. And it's actually okay to wait longer than three seconds. It's actually better to wait longer than three seconds. So I took this mare that she said really only knew how to step over with uh, a whip. And I proved in about two minutes that you actually don't need the whip. You just needed to wait for her to step over. Don't be quick to tap. Be quick to wait. Be quick to wait. Tapping, getting them to move over is not about tapping. It's about training. Um, Kathy says, I taught my Arab to stand up to anything in five minutes. Some horses learn this in like literally five minutes. My Arab learned it that quick too. Um, oh wait, let's see. Oh wait, somebody deleted their comment. So I can't finish reading that. Sorry. But yes, Arabs can learn this really quickly. Um, okay. So yeah, uh, that comment just went away. So we'll see if anybody else comments. So yeah, you can teach this super, super fast. Don't be quick to hit with the whip. Uh, if you have a very low energy horse, feel free to hit the ground. And actually, why am I telling you these? These are all in the free video. Or, again, you can buy the DVD. And yes, I do have a DVD. You can watch these free videos. But, you know, there's there's always going to be the DVD. That's how I make money. But you don't have to buy it because there's free stuff. Okay. So, excellent. We've covered that. Um... We've got another fun topic coming up tomorrow, which I'm trying to remember what I did. What I said was going to be the fun topic because I schedule these and then I forget what I'm doing. Um, and then next week I've got more fun stuff because it's interesting. We have a lot of uh, a lot of new people watching, which is wonderful, but it means that I go back and rehash. So tomorrow we're talking about how head down can fix the pace. And I'll be using some footage uh, from horses that I worked with in the last couple of clinics on how head down was the only thing we needed and then we had gait. Now, that's not true of every horse, but it's definitely true of a lot. That head down can fix it. Let me know if anybody has any more questions. We've got some really good comments today and good interaction. And again, one of the best things you could do is if you could is really, really, really try to share this video. Share it on your training, your trail riding groups, uh, because this could help somebody not get hurt. Kathy says, I'm still working with my Tennessee walking horse. I've had her for three years. She's trained by Clinton Anderson Methods. I don't know how Clinton Anderson teaches it. So just keep working at it and uh, be patient and watch my free video because it's free. I feel like I'm repeating myself. Um, okay. Well, we, uh, will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck. If you guys get your horses coming to you after watching this video, I would love to see videos of you guys doing it and make a montage of all the horses that step over. Um, so we can prove to people that anybody can train this. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please share and see you guys next time. You got this.